Coming up, herding cats, literally. And there are airplanes involved, too. If there are pilots on your list, we have gifts galore, and Hollywood and space come together in Kansas. AOPA Live this week begins right after this. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying at sonicsaircraft.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Tradition with a twist. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AOPA Live This Week. I'm Warren Morningstar. I'm sitting in for Tom Haynes. The tradition is the Tanger Island Holly Run. Every year about this time, pilots from the Mid-Atlantic area gather to fly holly and presents to the isolated residents of Tanger Island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. Well, you see, evergreens don't grow on the island, so islanders depend on aircraft and boats to bring them the signs of the season. But this year, pilots are bringing something back to the mainland. Here's more from Paul Harrop. In the far southern reaches of the Chesapeake Bay, you'll find a place that hasn't changed much in the last few hundred years. Tangier Island is a place out of time. The locals rely on the waters for their living, that and tourists who travel to traverse the narrow streets. Today, the island is welcoming dozens of aircraft. They come from Maryland, where pilots gathered for breakfast with Santa. Santa's here! To fill up on coffee and bags of Christmas cheer. Grab three to start. All right, look. Okay. Want to take two bags? Yeah, we can take two. It's all about community. And at the Holly Run, it's a unique opportunity for the island community and the pilot community to get together to celebrate Christmas. They're bringing holly to the island so the halls can be decked in green, can fill this anachronism of a village. It'd be easy to get caught up in how idyllic Tangier Island is, but it's not without its problems. Erosion is causing a serious threat to the long-term survivability of the island itself, but that's a long-term issue. In the short term, they have more cats on the island than people, and they have to figure out, yeah, what to do with them. This is the first time for, for helping out with the cats. If there's two things Helen Woods loves most, it's airplanes and kitties. So it's no surprise that this Eastern Shore flight instructor is helping, well, herd cats. The cats that they have over there are, are varying levels of domestication. Some of them can be picked up and held, some of them are too skittish to do so. But the cats that are over there have been breeding freely for many years. So rescue groups and volunteers pooled resources. Pilots helped ferry veterinarians and supplies, and over the last few months, they fixed around 150 cats. Now it's time to get them to new forever homes. It's okay. For pilot Michelle Danoff, this is a first. I have not flown cats before. We have done dog rescues, and I have flown honeybees. But a mission she and others are happy to take on. As pilots, we love missions. Uh, we love any excuse to go fly, and if it's got a uh, a component of doing good, all the better. And for these freaked out felines fixing to fly, there's no better mission accomplished. We're going to new homes. On Tangier Island, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. <laughs> I guess I never thought of Paul as a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed to like the cat, or the cat liked him. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, Melissa, they've been doing that holly run to Tangier Island since 1948. I think the first airplane was uh, was an air coop, uh, because really, uh, the airplanes and the boats are the only way to get things in there. Um, you know, not on, on the holly run, they not only bring in the evergreens, but they bring in presents for the kids and the like. But also, their only doctor flies in every week from the mainland. Yeah, I know. It's A lot of people are surprised there's an island that has that kind of remoteness, rem remoteness in the northeast, to crowd northeast, northeast, but it's a really unique place. And it's a great place to fly to. So. Yeah. Great. And in the spirit of giving, AOPA and seven other organizations are asking Congress to give a little more to veterans. More money for flight training, that is. There's a bill in the House that would improve the way GI Bill benefits can be applied to flight training, but it also puts a cap on the amount that can be used for that. And it makes it harder for veterans to advance in a flying career. The letter to the Veterans Affairs Committee said that the flight training is expensive 
and the funding cap would just about guarantee that veterans wouldn't be able to afford their goals of getting into the aviation industry. Well, here's an advance for flyers down under. Medical reform has traveled to Australia. Their Civil Aviation Safety Authority has just announced the basic Class II medical. It will apply to pilots flying piston aircraft with up to five non-paying passengers in daytime VFR. And like our basic med, GA pilots can now visit a general practitioner. AOPA and AOPA Australia teamed up to urge for medical reform, similar to basic med. And AOPA also continues to work for similar medical reform in Canada. And you know, here in the U.S., nearly 25,000 pilots are now flying under basic med. But a big setback for American Airlines. A supposed computer glitch allowed a whole bunch of their pilots to schedule vacation over the Christmas holiday. At first, some 15,000 flights were left without cockpit crews. But with some negotiating with the union, American was able to get the crews back into the left and right seats for a reported additional 10 million bucks in salaries. You know, and yet, Melissa, the airlines just keep pushing to get control of uh, air traffic control because they say they can do a better job than the FAA. But I haven't seen the FAA have any computer glitches like that. Uh, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence, but certainly a nice Christmas bonus <laughs> for the pilots <laughs> that will be flying. But another reason of why we just don't think that privatization is a good idea. Yes, the list keeps getting longer. <laughs> Well, American may have trouble with its computer, uh, computers and applications, but the AOPA app is doing just fine, thank you. In fact, we just got an award from the Academy of Interactive and Visual Arts, the Davy Award, and you all seem to like it too. More than 10,000 downloads so far from Apple and Google stores. You can use the AOPA app to watch our videos, listen to our podcasts, read the latest aviation news, get alerts on temporary flight restrictions, and a lot of other stuff too. Again, you can find the AOPA app in the Apple and Google stores. And while we're talking about electronic stuff, Garmin has just received new approvals on its G5 electronic flight instruments. The non-TSO display now has approval in Europe from EASA and an amendment to the US STC, which will allow for flush mounting on the panel. Put two G5s in the airplane and you can throw that vacuum pump right out the door. There's a new adapter that will pair the G5 with a bunch of different autopilots. Now the G5 was originally developed for the experimental market, but thanks to an effort by both AOPA and EAA, many of these safety enhancing, relatively inexpensive non-TSO devices are now permitted in certificated aircraft. Coming up after the break, we know what pilots want. And when you walk in here, you'll think you're not in Kansas anymore. You're watching AOPA Live this week. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Welcome back. Well, tis the season to give and to buy. So for you or the aviator in your life, we present once again our AOPA Gear Guide, a collection of new, old, well-proven, and futuristic gadgets and gear selected by AOPA pilot editors. It's broken out by the type of flying you do, business flyer, personal flyer, or passenger, and so on. You can find the Gear Guide on our website and cast your vote for your favorite item among the editor's picks, and you could win them all. See the website for our contest rules. And here are some more ideas straight from our shameless commerce division. Uh, apologies to click and clack the Tabbit brothers. How about a unique AOPA Live mug? Show the world you know where to find the best aviation videos and also remain highly caffeinated. You'll find it in the AOPA store on our website. And if you still remember how to use the US mail, we have a nice collection of aviation themed Christmas and holiday greeting cards. Need something to keep you or your loved one toasty and let the world know that you're a pilot? Well, we have some great quality outerwear with the AOPA wings. Of course, we have hats and other clothes and gadgets as well. Just click on the store tab. And finally, what do a small museum in Hutch Hutchinson, Kansas and Hollywood have in common? The answer is out of this world. Al Marsh has more. At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition. Five F-1 rocket engines lifted Apollo 11 towards the first moon landing. 
and then fell with the first stage into the Atlantic Ocean. Amazon owner Jeff Bezos recovered them and sent them to the Cosmosphere, a museum in Hutchison, Kansas, to be restored. The Cosmosphere is one of the more unique science education centers, not only in the country, but in the world. We maintain a collection of U.S. artifacts as well as, as former Soviet artifacts that put this museum in a position uh, to be able to tell the story of how man got to the moon and the race that was carried out to get there. In the process, the museum developed a less glamorous and little-known restoration and replica center. It became so good that most of the spacecraft replicas for the movie Apollo 13 were built there. The Cosmosphere operates a division called SpaceWorks. This division has been a part of the Cosmosphere since the early 80s. We bring together craftsmen who are very talented and very skilled, but also have the ability to do many different things. And then by the 90s, as that expertise had built up and notoriety had grown, Hollywood came calling. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Lay in. All right, quiet, please. Here we go. Ron Howard uh, called upon the Cosmosphere to help produce the set props and set hardware for his movie Apollo 13. In 2012, Jeff Bezos funded a research project to find Saturn engines at the bottom of the Atlantic. A five-year-old during the launch of Apollo 11, Jeff Bezos remembered watching that and it was inspirational uh, to him. And so what he thought of was bringing up the F-1 engines from the bottom of the Atlantic. Recently, a promotional company called JVS in Prague, Czechoslovakia, asked for a replica of the Apollo 11 command module for its world tour of space gear. We hadn't built a command module in, in a couple of years, and so it was almost like getting the band back together. No big deal, says Dale Caps of the museum's SpaceWorks division. They can whip up a command module in no time. We've done command modules before, so it's like the third or fourth one we've done. So we're kind of used to them now. And when we're all done, if the astronauts can't tell if it's real or not, then we've done a good job. Sean Crow, who built replicas of the crew couches, marvels at the amount of stuff aerospace engineers crammed into the tiny capsule. How did they get around obstacles? putting so much equipment in such a small space. And it's not just a small space, it's a small conical space. The couches had to actually fold up and fold under each other for stowage out of the way during the flight. It's just amazing some of the stuff they did. Jim Franco reconstructed the command module's control panel and has met many astronauts over the years. There's probably about 60 panels in this thing. I wouldn't even guess I'd have to count for switches and fuses. Everything's made by hand. I'd call it smoke and mirrors because everything has to look real. Very little of it is. Nothing hooked up. Doesn't fly. <laughs> they had a Gemini capsule here and Jim Lovell come in and they said, well, what do you think? And he says, it still smells the same. <laughs> and then got down off the ladder a lot of them will not get back in. It is. It's fun. It's fun. That and uh, you get to meet a lot of neat people. The command module replica is currently in Rome. Next time you're at the movies and see spacecraft, there's a good chance the movie set was made in Hutchison, Kansas. Al Marsh, AOPA Live. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Rocket Tranquility. You can read a lot more about the Cosmosphere and Spaceworks in the January edition of AOPA Pilot Magazine. The digital edition is available now. Wow, that brings back memories. I'm, well, well, you're too young, but I remember oh, no, the, no, no. the lunar landing. <laughs> I remember it well. I was young, but I remember it well. And it was fascinating. I remember my first trip down to the Kennedy Space Center as a kid. And just the, how amazing that the whole space program is amazing. I think we forget that sometimes. Yeah, and, and to think that we now have in our phone I don't know, about 10, 20 times the computing power that they had in that, in that capsule, probably a lot more. Yeah, but absolutely. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> well, this is our uh, last regular show for 2017. Next week, the Director's Cut, where we revisit some of your favorite stories of the year and tell you a little bit of the story behind the story. So until next Thursday, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate the time you spend with us. Fly safe and happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone.
There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com.